LGBTQ people in Afghanistan are living in fear. A new report from the Jerusalem Post says they are being hunted down by the Taliban. But even before Taliban rule, members of the LGBTQ community lived in an increased risk for violence in the country. Now the organization Rainbow Railroad is sounding the alarm, working to help LGBTQ people flee the country. Kimberly Powell is the executive director of Rainbow Railroad, and he joins us live now for more. Kimberly, welcome. It's great to have you with us. What is the reality of life for LGBTQ people in Afghanistan, especially with the Taliban now in power? Thanks for having me. So we were fearful before the fall of Kabul um, that once the Taliban took over, LGBTQI people would be in real danger. Uh, conditions for the community was not good uh, prior to the Taliban takeover. It, uh, Afghanistan is a country that criminalizes same-sex intimacy, and so people were already at risk. But since the withdrawal and the Taliban takeover, we've seen what we've feared, um, increased physical violence for LGBTQI people, um, kill lists being circulated of people. Uh, families, uh, outing relatives, um, putting them on this list, uh, and searches, random searches from Taliban forces uh, that identify and persecute LGBTQI people. So how does your organization reach those who are looking to evacuate, and, and what are the risks uh, even communicating with these individuals? You know, those individuals find us. Um, I think, uh, you know, we have, um, we've made ourselves available through our networks uh, to identify people at risk. And, um, you know, we are doing everything we can to support uh, those who remain in Afghanistan. Uh, the dangers are real, you know. Uh, one real egregious example in one of these raids was an individual who was identified as LGBTQI, LGBTQI, uh, whose passport identity information was damaged and, and burned, um, then that person being subject to physical harm. And so uh, the risks are real. And the only option for many of those people is to get out of the country. And so how many people have you been able to uh, help in Afghanistan? Have you been able to get some out? Um, and how many people would you say continue to reach out to you? Do you hear from people on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, you know, how often and how many people are you uh, helping? Well, I'd say it's more of an hourly basis. You know, we have fielded wow. uh, over 700 requests and counting since um, August 31st. Uh, you know, we identified uh, 200 people to the State Department um, before the fall, uh, sorry, before the withdrawal. Uh, and we have had success getting people um, out of Afghanistan to safe haven. Uh, now the key is uh, for the U.S. government uh, that we have the capacity and the tools to get people out of Afghanistan. What we need the United States to do is uh, fast track resettlement into the United States. So you're asking for the U.S. to help. Can other governments around the world also help? Are you involved with any others? Absolutely. I'd say other, other governments have signaled support as well. This has to be a coalition, just like the war was a coalition of like-minded governments collectively working together to provide safe haven for LGBTQI community. Uh, and for a fraction of the resources um, oh, that this whole um, war has cost, we can uh, get people out. And so we're willing to work with any government uh, that is willing to take LGBTQI refugees, but Rainbow Railroad is a U.S.-based uh, organization, and so we're counting on the U.S. government to take a leadership role in getting people to safety. Kimberly Power, thank you so much for joining us and for all the work you're doing helping to keep people safe. Thank you for having me.